we have long pondered who would win in a matchup between the greats of the past. In today's episode, we take a look at a matchup between the first black heavyweight champion of the world, the Galveston giant Jack Johnson versus gentleman James J. Corbett. Jack Johnson had a total of 76 official bouts along with several exhibitions. Johnson's record is 54 wins, 34 by knockout, with a knockout ratio of 45%. He suffered 11 defeats, he had 8 draws. He also had one no contest and 18 no decision bouts. He stood at 6 feet 0 and a half inches, with an aggregate weight of 203 pounds over his career. This included a 74-inch reach. Jim Corbett had a total of 20 official bouts. Corbett had 11 wins, 5 by knockout, with a knockout ratio of 63%. He suffered 4 defeats, 3 of them by knockout. He had 3 draws. He also had two no contests. He stood 6 feet 1 inch with an aggregate weight of 183 pounds over his career. This included a 73-inch reach. Born in Galveston, Texas, Jack Johnson is one of the biggest names the sport has ever seen. Johnson transformed the heavyweight division during his time with unprecedented defensive prowess. Johnson learned from an early defeat to Joe Koinsky, to take his time and focus on defense, having already been considered one of the great offensive heavyweights at that time. Johnson was to become arguably the greatest heavyweight of all time. His combination of size, skill, speed, and strength proved to be overwhelming for many of the top heavyweights during his reigns as both colored and world heavyweight champion. Johnson mastered the art of tying up his opponents and entirely nullifying their offense on the inside. He was also a master of pacing himself and only going for the knockout when he felt he'd thoroughly worn opponents to the point of no return. Johnson also was a master of mind games and routinely played both to fighters and crowds during his fights. Johnson would drag out fights to aggravate the viewing audience while smiling through the fiasco. Ever the showman. Johnson also ushered in a level of in and out of the ring flashiness still seen today complementing his personality and style. With this, Johnson knew when to fight with bad intentions where needed and scored some of the significant visual stoppages we've seen from the time. Johnson employed an offense, predicated on him clinching opponents and landing hard shots on the inside. He would also counter opponents rushing in, catching them with clean hooks and uppercuts. Johnson was poised in the ring and fought some of his best fights in hostile environments where those in attendance often hated him and were eager to strip him of this title. Corbett is credited with being one of the greatest tacticians in boxing history. He was a scientific boxer who brought a technical approach to his offense and defense. Corbett worked on his craft by spending time in the amateurs, where he became champion of the San Francisco's Olympic Athletic Club in 1884. Corbett was calculated with his punches and effectively utilized the jab to set up his punches. He was also great at feinting, allowing him to land accurate shots while maintaining distance and form. Corbett was also a master at countering punches and routinely won the early rounds of fights as opponents tried to figure out ways of getting inside and cutting off the ring. Corbett's footwork was some of the best for his time. It allowed him to remain a very elusive fighter, especially when facing fighters larger than him, which was sometimes the case as he would be considered a small heavyweight by modern standards. In his three knockout losses, two to James J. Jeffries and one to Bob Fitzsimmons, Corbett effectively outboxed his opponents through the early parts of the fight before slowing down and ultimately being stopped in the later rounds. Though he was a very lean heavyweight, his overall boxing package allowed him to be an effective fighter, though he was fairly inactive, compared to other fighters from his time. Other boxers highly regarded Corbett, and even as he got up in age, Corbett was called upon to prepare and strategize with other boxers to help improve their abilities. This is evident by his sparring with heavyweight champion Gene Tunney, who learned from Corbett's style and is also highly esteemed as a scientific and innovative boxer. Corbett's style is still relevant in the modern day. Corbett adapted his style and footwork to allow him to outbox several opponents as he did not have elite punching power and often went the full distance.
Johnson held the world heavyweight title from 1908 to 1915. In 1908, he eagerly and easily defeated then heavyweight champion Tommy Burns in Australia to pick up the strap. Other notable opponents include the Boston Bone Crusher, Sam Langford, Sam McVie, Joe Jeanette, Philadelphia Jack O'Brien, Stanley Ketchell, Bob Fitzsimmons, James J. Jeffries, Denver Ed Martin, and young Peter Jackson. Corbett held the world heavyweight title from 1892 to 1897. Corbett won the title by defeating then-undefeated John L. Sullivan in Sullivan's final career fight. Other notable opponents include James J. Jeffries, Peter Jackson, Joe Koinsky, Jake Kilrain, Bob Fitzsimmons, Charles Kid McCoy, and Tom Sharkey. Corbett fought a total of nine Hall of Famers. Who would win, prime for prime? Style and skill goes to Johnson. Corbett essentially ushered in the scientific form of boxing to the heavyweight division that has evolved into the sport we love today. Corbett spent time crafting his technique on the amateur scene and used this time to study how to box with tact effectively. Employing the effective use of the jab is, to this day, a foundational aspect of boxing. Johnson took a bit of what Corbett offered and applied it to his own game. He was a brilliant tactician who used his defense at the highest of levels to dominate opponents to such a high degree that there was a search for a great white hope to dethrone him. Johnson's combination of size and athleticism was nearly unmatched at his peak. Endurance is even. Both men fought in long fights, and it was primarily endurance that left the two fighters vulnerable in some of their high-profile fights in which they were knocked out late though they were ahead on the cards. For this, Chin is also even as each man did suffer multiple knockout losses. Johnson avoided such until past his prime during his final title fight. Power goes to Johnson. Johnson racked up several knockouts during his title reign and in his most high-profile fights. His combination of power and skill allowed him to dominate said fights. Corbett wasn't known as a puncher and often went the distance. Speed is even but for different reasons. Corbett's foot speed was elite during his early days of boxing and he became a great counterpuncher. He was also fairly elusive and light on his feet. Johnson's speed proved to make him one of the most explosive fighters. CV, CV is even for varying reasons. Johnson fought a higher assortment of elite fighters, but given the number of fights that Corbett had for his career, he did fight nine Hall of Famers, which makes up half of his fight total. While intangibles can't be fully measured, Johnson had the makings of a fantastic story and fighter. His ability to compete at the level he did in hostility has shown his overall worth and ability to adapt to any environment. When factoring in each boxer's prime, the odds seem to heavily favor Jack Johnson. Johnson stacks up against any heavyweight in any era and is a giant when thinking of the best heavyweights of all time.